Live from Jerusalem, this is BBC News. The top headlines this hour. The Israeli military says it carried out a targeted raid using tanks in Gaza. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says his country is preparing for a ground invasion. In Gaza, UN aid workers say a decision will be taken shortly over whether a lack of fuel will stop them supporting hundreds of thousands of displaced civilians. And in the United States, police are trying to find a man who's killed at least 16 people in a mass shooting. Hello, I'm Lise Doucette in Jerusalem. It's 11 a.m. in the morning in Israel and in the Gaza Strip. Our top story this hour, the Israeli military says it has carried out what it described as a significant incursion into the Gaza Strip overnight to attack the positions of Hamas. Speaking a short time ago to the BBC, an Israeli Defence Forces spokesperson said soldiers carried out the tactical raid towards central Gaza to, in his words, prepare the battlefield for future operations. Take a listen. So many factors. Tom Bateman, thank you very much uh, for joining us with your observations and you're watching BBC News around the world and across the United Kingdom. You're live with BBC News. Well, in this crisis, social media has been flooded with false claims about the situation here in Israel, in Gaza and across the Middle East, with some of the most brazen posts downplaying the violence committed against children. When two four-year-old boys were killed, one Palestinian, one Israeli, their deaths were denied on social media, much to the anguish of their families. But their stories are symbolic of the information war being waged across social media platforms. Let's bring our disinformation and social media correspondent, Mariana Spring, who's been looking at the story of two boys, which tell a much wider story. Stephen Ryan, I wish we had more time. We're just coming to the end of this half hour of the program, but I'm sure we will speak to you again because the ICRC plays so many crucial roles in this escalating crisis. You've been hearing all your staff as well um, inside Gaza have been displaced and some are missing. It is the plight of all the aid agencies working here in incredibly difficult and dangerous conditions. You're watching BBC News. Live from Jerusalem, this is BBC News, the headlines this hour. The Israeli military says it has carried out a targeted raid using tanks into Gaza. The Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said the country is preparing for a ground invasion. In Gaza, UN aid workers say a decision will have to be taken shortly over whether a lack of fuel will stop them supporting hundreds of thousands of displaced civilians. And in the United States, police are trying to find a man who killed at least 16 people in a mass shooting. And let's bring you some breaking news this hour. In the last half hour, the Israeli military says the number of people confirmed to be held hostage in Gaza has now risen to 224. It's warning, too, that the numbers could rise. The Israeli military says that all of the families have been notified. And while we don't know all of the identities, it is known that the hostages include Israelis, but also dozens of other nationalities. Well, this news on the hostages comes as the Israeli military says it carried out a significant incursion, in its words, into the Gaza Strip overnight to attack Hamas positions. And it's the first time it has released video showing tanks and armoured bulldozers crossing the perimeter fence. On Wednesday evening, the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who said a ground 
invasion into Gaza was coming, following many questions at home and abroad about why it had not yet been launched. Thank you, Nabel Fasak. I hope we can speak with you again. Thank you very much for updating us on the dire uh, situation in the Gaza Strip and the growing alarm. Nabel Fasak from the Palestinian Red Crescent Society in Ramallah in the occupied West Bank. And that is goodbye from Jerusalem for now. You're live with BBC News. Hello, I'm Kylie Pentelow. U.S. media is reporting at least 16 people have been killed and up to 60 injured in a mass shooting in the state of Maine. Police say the gunman targeted multiple locations in the city of Lewiston and is still at large. Residents have been warned to stay at home. Well, for more on this, we can go live to CBS News correspondent Laura Hayfeli. Laura, can you just take us through what happened here? Okay, Laura, thank you very much for that update. Before we go, let's uh, recap the breaking news this hour. And the Israeli military says the number of people confirmed held hostage in Gaza has now risen to 224. It's also warning the number could rise. It comes as the Israeli military says it's carried out a significant incursion into the Gaza Strip overnight to attack Hamas positions. We will, of course, have the latest on this throughout the day. You're watching BBC News. From Jerusalem, this is BBC News. Our top headlines this hour. The Israeli military says it has carried out a significant raid into Gaza, a targeted strike using tanks, as Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says the country is preparing for a ground invasion. In Gaza, UN aid workers say a decision will be taken soon over whether a lack of fuel will stop them supporting hundreds of thousands of displaced civilians. And in the United States, police say they are trying to find a man who's killed at least 16 people in a mass shooting. Welcome to BBC News in Jerusalem. It's 12 o'clock local time. The Israeli military says the number of people confirmed so far to be held hostage in Gaza has now risen to 224. It's also warning that that number, which continues to rise every day, could also rise. Sir Mark Lowcock, around the world and across the United Kingdom, you're watching BBC News. Let's just take a look now at some of the other stories uh, making headlines around the world. Emergency workers are trying to reach Mexico's Guerrero state after it was hit by one of the strongest hurricanes ever recorded on the country's Pacific coast. Hurricane Otis brought communications down in the popular resort city of Apoco and details of the situation there are sketchy. Access roads have been blocked by the landside. In the U.S., the House of Representatives has elected a new Republican speaker, ending three weeks of paralysis caused by party infighting. Mike Johnson, a conservative ally of the former President Donald Trump, was the fourth candidate put forward for the role after Kevin McCarthy was ousted by Republican hardliners. 
And in the U.S., the auto workers union said it reached a tentative agreement with Ford to end a six-week strike over pay and conditions. The deal would be the first settlement of the industrial action that's seen around 45,000 staff walk out. You're watching BBC News. We're live this hour from Jerusalem following all of the developments in this intensifying crisis, both military, humanitarian and updates, of course, on the hostage situation. Let's go to southern Israel to join our correspondent, Weira Davis, who's been spending the morning there. Weira, just tell us what's been happening there in the past hour or so. We're Weary Davis, uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us uh, from southern Israel, not far from the Gaza border. As war continues uh, with uh, Israel intensifying both its airstrikes as well as what it said was a significant incursion on ground using tanks into the Gaza Strip. We'll continue to follow all of the developments. But the, thank you for watching BBC News. Live from Jerusalem, this is BBC News, the headlines this hour. The Israeli military says it's carried out a targeted raid, sending tanks into Gaza. After Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said the country is preparing for a ground offensive. In Gaza, the UN says it's begun to significantly scale down its operations, where they've been sheltering hundreds of thousands of displaced civilians. In the United States, police are trying to find a man who's killed at least 16 people in two mass shootings. And in the United Kingdom, the Prime Minister Rishi Sunak warns that artificial intelligence could increase the risk of cyber attacks, but that people shouldn't lose sleep over the threats posed by the technology. You're watching BBC News from Jerusalem. I'm Lise Doucette. Our top story this hour. The Israeli military says it has carried out what it called a significant incursion into the Gaza Strip overnight to attack Hamas positions. These are the images that they release. You can see it shows how tanks and armored bulldozers are in the lead going in on the ground. It's not the first time the IDF has confirmed an incursion into the Gaza Strip since October the 7th, but this is thought to be the biggest uh, since then and the first time that it has released these images. On October the 13th, the IDF had announced raids into, into Gaza for the first time. It said it had been targeting Hamas as cells and it was also sending troops in with tanks in order to attack Hamas rocket positions. So much anguish, so many eyes focused on this uh, hostage crisis and also on the humanitarian crisis as on day 20 of the Israel-Gaza war, the war continues to intensify. We'll continue our special coverage from Jerusalem and many other places here in Israel and across the border in Gaza and beyond. But for now, I'm going to hand you back to Kylie in the studio in London. Thank you. Hello, I'm Kylie Pentelow. U.S. media say more than 20 people are feared dead after a mass shooting in the state of Maine. Police say the gunman targeted multiple locations in the city of Lewiston and is still at large. Residents have been warned to stay at home. A 40-year-old man, Robert Card, has been identified as a person of interest. Well, for more on this, uh, we can go live to our CBS News correspondent, Laura Hayfeli, uh, who is in Lewiston in Maine for us. Uh, Laura, so police still hunting for the gunman then? Now, before we go, let's uh, recap some of the latest lines from the Israel-Gaza war. The Israeli military says the number of people confirmed held hostage in Gaza has now risen to 224. It's also warning that number could rise. The Israeli military also says it's carried out a significant incursion into the Gaza Strip overnight to attack Hamas positions. It released this video showing tanks and armoured bulldozers crossing the perimeter fence. Of course, there is more of that on our website. You're watching BBC News.
live from Jerusalem. This is BBC News, our top headlines this hour. The Israeli military says it's carried out a targeted raid sending tanks into Gaza after Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said the country is preparing for a ground offensive. In Gaza, the UN says it's begun to significantly scale down its operations where they've been sheltering hundreds of thousands of displaced civilians. In the United States, a major manhunt is underway in the state of Maine as police search for a gunman who killed at least 16 people in a mass shooting. And in Britain, the Prime Minister Rishi Sunak is warning that artificial intelligence could increase the risk of cyber attacks as he announces the world's first AI safety institute. Welcome to BBC News. We're live in Jerusalem. Well, the Israeli military in the last few hours has said the number of people now confirmed to be held hostage in the Gaza Strip has risen to 224, and it warned the number could rise further. And it's known that that includes many nationalities. The Israeli Defense Forces also says it has carried out what it described as a significant incursion into the Gaza Strip to attack Hamas positions. Speaking to the BBC, the IDF spokesperson said that they had carried out a tactical raid towards central Gaza, in his words, to prepare the battlefield for future operations. This is more of what he had to say. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. Well, let's now take a look at some of the other stories that are making news around the world. Accommodation costs use up almost all of the average maintenance loan received by university students in England, so says a student housing charity, Unipol. In the last two years, the average student rent has gone up by more than 14%, while maintenance loans have written risen by 5.2%. The government could face a judicial review after excluding some health workers from a one-off bonus. It was intended to recognize work carried out since the COVID pandemic, but thousands of outsourced staff, as they're called, such as community nurses and physiotherapists, won't receive it. <coughs> Excuse me. For the first time in years, the Remembrance poppies have undergone change. The new flowers for the Royal British um, Legion's annual appeal are entirely plastic free and now will be able to be recycled. You're live with BBC News from Jerusalem. Well, as we've been reporting over the past few hours, the Israeli military has said it has confirmed that at least 224 people are being held hostage in the Gaza Strip, and it has warned that that number could rise further. We have been hearing every few days the number of hostages being held, not just by Hamas, but also from is by Islamic Jihad, keeps rising, and it includes. Israelis, but also dozens of other nationalities. It is a highly risky operation to try to free them, and that is why negotiations have been going on, mediated by states like the Gulf state of Qatar. To them, Israelis, but also international hostages being held by Hamas in Gaza. Stay with us here on BBC News. Now on BBC News, the latest business news from across the globe. World Business Report. Ford and the United Auto Workers Union reach a tentative deal to end a six-week strike, but still no agreements at GM or Stellantis. And taking the stand, we find out more about the crypto king, Sam Bankman-Fried, as he agrees to testify at his fraud trial. 
Oh, hello there. And uh, welcome to World Business Report. We're going to start the programme in the United States, where after nearly six weeks of costly strike action, the American car giant Ford has reached a tentative deal with the United Auto Workers Union. Now, the agreement still needs to be ratified by the union uh, members and is expected to provide a 25% wage hike over a four-year period. UAW has asked striking Ford workers to go back to work whilst that deal is put to the vote. General Motors and Chrysler's parent company, Stellantis, continue with those negotiations with the unions. Joining me now... To discuss this further is the car industry expert, Professor David Bailey uh, from the University of Birmingham here in the UK. Uh, Professor, welcome to the programme. Um, it's Thank been you. hailed, hasn't it, as historic. It's had support throughout, in fact, um, for the strike by President Biden. But people are already starting to express concerns about what is going to happen going forward. That report by Erin there. Here in the UK and uh, airlines have warned passengers that they'll face higher fares after the aviation regulator increased air traffic control charges. The costs paid by airlines come after a UK air traffic control meltdown in August, which led to long flight delays and left thousands stranded. The fee rising from £47 to £64 per flight until 2027. Airlines saying that the increases can't be justified given the recent disruption. And more than 300,000 people attended Eurovision related events in Liverpool in May, giving the local economy a £55 million pound boost. In total, 306,000 people visited the city centre for Eurovision events. Tourists spent £55 million pounds in places like bars, hotels, restaurants and shops. Figures well above the council's predictions of £25 million. Pounds. Um, markets, lots of people watching those today. European stock markets edged a little lower with uh, investors keeping a very close eye on those latest ECB um, interest rate decisions that we've been talking about. So we'll keep an eye on those and see how those markets in Europe, Europe act and of course at the US uh, later. This is World Business Report. Hello there, this is your updates from the BBC Sports Centre. News affecting the Rugby World Cup final this weekend. South Africa will have hooker Bongi Mrambi available after a ruling of insufficient evidence that he used a racial slur towards England's Tom Curry. There we go. Just a reminder of the cricket as well. 126 for seven now, England against Sri Lanka. England not doing too well at all. All the updates from that on the BBC Sport website. We will see you soon. Hello, you're watching BBC News. I'm Kylie Pentelow. Pakistan has given a last warning to all immigrants in the country illegally to leave voluntarily before the 1st of November. They include hundreds of thousands of Afghans. The first charter flight in months bringing Afghan refugees from Pakistan to the UK is due to leave today. Thousands of people and their families who risked their lives to work with or for the UK in Afghanistan and were promised UK visas have been stuck in Pakistan, some for over a year. Well, for more on this, uh, let's go live to Caroline Davis, who's in Islamabad uh, for us. So, Caroline, what's the background to this situation? OK, we'll have to leave it there. Caroline Davis in Islamabad. Thank you very much. OK, now it's time for a look at the weather with Sarah Keith Lucas. Hello. Our very unsettled, changeable spell of autumn weather